Hello, Internet! I'm Elliot the Purple Hair Doofus, and welcome to the conclusion of House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Today we are finishing this book, so I hope you have finished it too, because I do not want to ruin the ending for you. The final section begins with Karen trying to sell the house. She goes to a realtor, they tell her, you know, I'm not surprised that you want to sell this house. It's been sold so many times before. It's had 15 residents in the past 11 years or something like that. Most just kind of disappear, but a few have resold it with the comments that it was too roomy or haunted or something like that. You know, I'm reading this manuscript and I'm reading all this, like, poopy writing and stuff, and I can't believe that they used to confuse S's for F's. So I'm just going to write with a lisp for this section. Anyway, I met up with Lude, my buddy. Turns out, turf out, he's in the hospital. Hospital. Yeah. This is exactly how this section reads. Reads. Uh. <sighs> Turf out. He's in the hoff diddle. Because he was hunted down by this dude who was the boyfriend of some girl that I fucked. And, well, that guy kind of beat the crap out of him. Sorry, dude. I mean, sorry, dude. I, I... I'm really sorry. Oh, Johnny, 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 Johnny. <sighs> Johnny. Really don't like you, bud. Really hate ya. Anyways, Carrie decides that she's going to stay in town while they're trying to sell the house. She goes back in to the house and she starts to hear things. And she starts to believe that Navidson is still alive. So she moves back into the house to try and get him to come out of wherever he's hiding and takes the house off the market. She believes that Navidson is alive so wholeheartedly that she calls up Reston and says, he's alive, you have to come see this, you have to come hear this, you have to come be with me because I don't think anyone else will ever believe me when I tell them that my husband is still alive. Navidson's things start appearing in their bedroom in the house, and so Karen resets up the Hi8 cameras, and while she's setting one up and looking at the screen, the dark blackness is opening up behind her and slowly coming for her. And then the chapter ends. You would think! that the next chapter would continue the story in some way. Tell us what happened with the blackness that was coming closer and closer. No. No, no, they decide to overanalyze Navidson's job because they couldn't do that 20 chapters ago for some odd reason. Really? Really? They're talking about all of his photography and how photography is actually 90% set up and probably 1% the actual picture. And how all the work is probably hours and hours of setup while grabbing the pictures is just one little blink of a second. Then we get on to chapter 20. It's practically 100 pages, but they're blank. Most of them are mostly blank. It's Navidson's adventures in the hallway, and it's so satisfying just to read those sections, even though I was reading the book like this. It was still just really satisfying to understand what was going through Navidson's head. To actually have a story of him. And basically, he packed up all of his survival gear, got a bike, a cart to attach to the bike, rode it into the hallway, just started riding. As he was riding, he found that the ground would slope down. He wouldn't even need to pedal anymore. and. All he would do is just break. Then he figured that I've gone far enough, I might as well start back. And as he starts heading back, the ground starts sloping down again. And he gets confused and he thinks he's going the wrong way. So turns around and starts 
going back the other way and the ground slopes back down again. Almost as if the hallway is trying to entrap him even further. Eventually, he loses the bike. He loses all of his survival supplies and it's just him, a book of matches, and the fucking book that I'm reading in my hand. Seriously? How does that even make sense? Navidson is reading the book about him as it is being written, and he is burning the pages just to keep alive? You... What? 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 <sighs> ah! He keeps on traveling down that twisty hallway until he comes to a window. And on the other side of that window is fucking fantastic. So Lute died. My best bud is dead. <sighs> it turns out that the guy who I mentioned before beat the crap out of him. Well, he was chasing Lude or something. And Lou got into a car accident. More a motorcycle accident. And the only thing that he was left with was his jaw. So I decide that I need to go on a road trip. And I need to find this supposed mystical house that I have been looking for this entire time. So I go road tripping. But before I do, I decide to visit Lute's place. And I run into the dude that beat the shit out of him. And I get so angry. Because it's him and the girlfriend. The girlfriend is trying to stop him, but he's just... He's just being an asshole. And, uh... Well, I killed the fucker. I literally ripped him to shreds with my bare hands. And then after that, I decided that I was going to force myself upon that woman again. And she was going to enjoy it, whether she wanted to or not. Wait a minute, Johnny. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you're telling me that you actually killed this fucker? And now you're going to rape his girlfriend? Oh, I thought I hated you before, but now, no. So as I'm on this little road trip, you know, trying to find the house, my health is getting worse and worse and worse. I'm shriveling away to practically toothpicks sticking out of an olive, meaning that's what I look like. And, well... I go to visit my friends in Seattle. They're this couple, and they're both doctors, and they see me and they say, Oh my god, you look terrible. We have to take care of you. And I stay with them for about a month, and they have me eating better foods, they have me eating better medication, they have me exercising every day, and my mind is clear, and they have me, you know, just getting back to being human. And it feels amazing becoming human. And then, well, <laughs> you actually believed all that crap? No, none of that happened. I don't have friends that are doctors. I don't have friends. What the hell are you thinking? No, I'm still a coked out junky nerd that's going across the country looking for some house that doesn't exist. Because of some movie, so that some blind dude saw. <laughs> How in the world could you ever believe me? Really? What the fuck, Johnny? You're telling me that everything that you've ever told me is a lie? That I can never ever trust anything that you've said? Just that? Okay. Really? So as Elliot was reading my whole section, he didn't realize that all that stuff about the, the doctors and the road tripping and the, the, the killing of the, the dude, 
Well, it was all in the past. It started with Lude dying, and then it went back to the past. I guess I didn't make it clear enough by putting the dates above everything. I don't know how much more clear I could be, but that was all in the past, leading up to the point where Lude died. And, well, it really sent me in a spiral of depression. I, I called up Thumper, and she was actually thrilled to hear from me. And she said that she would cook for me, I could bathe there, I could do my laundry there. And we only actually met up for like 15 minutes on a break, but it was still great to see her. And then I go to this dive bar, and there's this band playing. And the band is amazing, so I decided to buy them beers. And it's really super cheap, so I'm really, really happy to buy them whatever they want. And then they have this song called The Five and a Half Minute Hallway, and it reminds me of the hallway and the name of the short film that was described in Zampino's manuscript. And I find out that the band actually wrote the song based off of the movie. And I find out that they have the book that, you know, I was reading. And I start reading it and I find out that it's the book that I'm writing. Because why the fuck wouldn't every major character in this book be reading the book that they are in? Really? No. Oh! And by the way, you remember how I was talking about my mom choking me and it was really sad and it made Elliot cry? <laughs> totally made him cry. Yeah, it didn't work out like that. No, no, my mom didn't want to go into the institution. She never ever assaulted me. What I actually remember is her being dragged off and crying after me. Sorry, dudes. All right, man. I'm, I'm kind of done with you. Really, really done with you. Really, it's like I. Your entire section has just been obliterated by the fact that you can't fucking tell the truth. Your entire section is useless. So let's just wrap this up with a story about a baby that was born with holes in its brain, and. His mother is really sad about the whole, you know, holes in the brain thing. So, she decides that she's going to cradle this baby until it dies. And, well, you know, the doctors are there with her and she's holding him for days at a time. And, well, the doctors actually start to think that maybe the baby might pull through. And, well... <clears throat> The mom says it's time to unplug the machines and see if this baby is going to live. And the doctors explain things to her, explain how the whole process is going to work. And the mother is just kind of like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then the, the machines get unplugged and then the baby dies. The end. Oh dear Johnny, 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 Johnny. Why? Why? Would your last words be an incredibly sad tale about a kid who dies in his mother's arms shortly after being born? Why? Fuck. That was a great place to put 30 pages of Johnny. That was an amazing place to put 30 pages of Johnny. So Karen actually steps into the darkness. As she's walking through it, she finds Nabitzen, and he is worse for wear. He is frostbitten. He has lost most of his fingers off one of his hands. He has lost an ear. She finds that his internal body temperature is something like 86 to 87 degrees, which is like death. And she's holding him in her arms and crying over him, and the house dissolves around them. That's the end of the story. The final chapter is just overanalyzing the final shots that I don't really care about. I mean, there's shots of just like photographs and pictures, and it's just stupid. Really, really stupid and useless. Wait a minute! So you're telling me that Navison is actually alive? 
then all those questions that you had about why he went back into the house, you could have just asked him? What the fuck? Well, that's been the House of Leaves. I didn't enjoy it, but maybe you did? I hope? Possibly? Please? Please tell me that you got some enjoyment out of it. Please! I don't have a question to ask you because this is the end of the book, and I don't have a question to answer because I left you a challenge last chapter. The next book that I'm reading, starting next week, is Bad Unicorn by Clark? No, Platt? No. Platt F. Clark! I'll, I'll, I'll memorize that name by the time I start reading it, I promise. Go out and grab it by any legal means necessary. Buy it from a friend, buy it at a bookstore, buy it from a library, buy it on a Kindle. I don't care what you do as long as it's legal and you read it before I ruin it for you. I've been Elliot the Purple Haired Doofus reminding you to watch the Pajama Radius. And this has been House of Fleas by Mark Z. Danlewski. This fucking... Toodles!